How you doing, man? It's Dan Schwartzman. Oh, what's going on? What's up? Okay, uh, I'm not sure if Tom Byrne is calling in, but we wanted to talk MLB realignment with you real quick. Beautiful. So, basically, what are your thoughts on this? This is Dan Schwartzman of 97.5 The Fanatic. What are your thoughts on the MLB possibly realigning? You know, Tim, to me, uh, let's be honest. I think MLB, the, the system in place right now with the wild card team and the, the three divisions in each league is perfectly fine. I don't understand if they believe the system is broken and needs to be fixed. The old adage, if it ain't broke, don't fix it to me, is perfect for this. I think it works well. I know there's an unbalance in the central division, but ultimately I think it's good enough to where you don't have to mess with it. I think the other aspect, for instance, the designated hitter and, and unifying it one way or another, is definitely something baseball needs to go and, 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 and definitely – come to some sort of resolution, but I don't think real line, it makes a lot of sense. I don't think you need more playoff teams. I think three right now is, you know, well, four in each, you know, in each league is perfectly fine. I don't want a second wild card. I think you're going to water down the product four if you get another playoff team. Yeah, I completely agree with that, and uh, this is uh, AC. We're part of the same uh, thing on YouTube. I'm a big fan of your show, dude. I, I appreciate you. you calling in. Yeah, I agree. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Because I, I don't think anything's wrong either. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I think baseball, you know, baseball 17 years or so ago tinkered and brought in the Central Division, brought in the wild card. And at that time, there was a radical change, guys. And I wasn't a big fan of it, but I've grown to really like what's happened. I've grown to really like the wild card format. And I think it's good the way it is, and they need to continue with it. I just don't understand why less than 20 years after making a change in the first place, they would change back to something more similar to what it used to be, a little bit more radical, of course, in terms of playoff teams. And I, to me, it's just unnecessary. That being said, um, what you, you said you now like the Central Division and, and all the implements that they put in like 20 years ago. Do you think 20 years from now you'll like what, they've, what they're thinking about doing if they actually go through and put in another wild card team and, and switch the... Uh, everything around that they're planning to do. Do you think you would actually like that 20 years from now, or what do you think? I don't, because, you know, you watch the NHL, you watch the NBA guys, too many teams make the playoffs. Eight in each conference is ridiculous. No offense to the Sixer fans out there, but when your team is a 500 team, they have no business being in the playoffs. I think we all agree on that. Why do you get rewarded by being a 500 team, or in, in, in worse, in some cases, not even being a 500 team, why should you be able to be rewarded by playing postseason sports? And I think that baseball, once in a while you have a St. Louis Cardinals team that's a few games over 500 that goes on and wins the World Series, but that's a rarity. And I don't need a team that's barely over 500 taking the last wild card spot that they've now instituted solely because it adds revenue. I don't think we need that. In baseball today, you earn it more than in any other sport making the postseason, and I'm perfectly fine with the way it is. Yeah, I mean, there, there's certain, but there are ways of looking at it, like you said, with the Cardinals. Like, in this case, the best teams would make it. And we're talking to Dan Schwartz from the 97.5, the Fanatic, that the best teams would make it rather than having a team in the East, the AL East winning 88 games and not making it and then having a team in the AL West win 84 games and making it. Like, wouldn't it be the best teams making it if we put it into that? Like, maybe there don't have to be eight people on it. But to have, like, five teams in, I don't mind that, I don't think. Yeah, but guys, how often has that happened? The wild card has taken taken that out of the equation for the most part, where the Yankees and Red Sox routinely win 90-some-odd games, and back in the day, one team would make it, the other team wouldn't make it. Well, the wild card took care of that, so both teams fairly regularly now make it, and very rarely do you have a third team in the equation where a second team, shall I say, fighting for a wild card spot that's got 90-some-odd wins that kind of get screwed at the end. I mean, I can't really off the top of my head recollect a team of baseball that hasn't even gotten the wild card after winning 90-some-odd games. Uh, you know, to me, a, a second wild card-type scenario of now getting the best teams regardless of, of division in, I think you're really still watering it down to a team that's winning maybe 85, 86 games. And in baseball, out of 162 games, you should be rewarded for that. The other year in the AL Central, the... Indians won 96, the Tigers won 95, and the White Sox won 90 and didn't get in. I mean, I'm just playing devil's advocate, but sure, there, sure. There, there certainly are situations where that has happened. But very 
rare, guys. I mean, let's be honest. It's a rarity when that happens. It's not a yearly occurrence where a team with 90-plus wins is getting screwed out of being in the, in the postseason. I mean, it's a rarity when it does happen. It doesn't happen enough, guys, to make radical changes, again, in, some, in a system that I think works fairly well. Actually, pretty darn good. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that, considering that there's there's no doubt that in baseball you, you have to earn it more than any other sport. Because sure, sure. the NBA and the, and the NHL has just gotten ridiculous at this point. Um, but with the with the the NFL last year, a team at I think it was seven and nine getting into the playoffs, and yeah. a team that was like ten and six did. That has I think the wild card and things like that has more of a place in that as where teams don't earn it. Would you agree with that? I, I agree with you. See, I was getting to seven and nine last year. Uh, you know, they even get a home game out of it, which is ridiculous. But that's how it is. But that's the first time in NFL history, I believe. That a, that a sub-500 team has actually made the playoffs. So, again, it's such a rarity, it's an oddity that, to me, it's not going to raise a red flag to where if I'm the NFL, I look to make changes. Yeah, it's stunk to be the New Orleans Saints who had to go to Seattle and play in round one, even though I believe you had 11 wins. Now, you lost, so you kind of, you know, you didn't, you didn't really make a good argument. But in the reality of it, it's such a rarity, it's never even happened except for last year that you don't look at it with concern and saying, wow, this might be a problem moving forward. Let's make a change. So, you know, it happened in the NFL. They're not, they're not looking at it concerned as to making wholesale changes. If anything, what I would say or institute is if you're a team that's sub-500, even if you win your crappy division, you still don't get to get a first-round home game the way that other divisional winners would do. If any changes would come out of last year's NFL with Seattle, that's the only change that I would be okay with. Yeah. I agree. I I gotta ask your opinion about LeBron James and his comments the other day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta be honest. You know, he's such a fraud. Let's be realistic. LeBron James. I've never seen a guy assassinate his own character within the course of less than a year the way the LeBron James did. And the icing on the cake was after he just lost the finals, mainly because he never showed up. Instead of just sitting there lamenting as to his own faults in not winning and his responsibilities, he's going to have to call out the common folk because we live pathetic lives and don't make millions of dollars. Now he's right. Most of us do live pathetic lives and have to get up for our nine-to-five job, and we're never going to see remotely anywhere near the amount of money LeBron makes. But you don't say it. You don't call out fans who either like you or don't like it. He says the haters, and that's fine. But even the fans that like LeBron James, guys, they work crappy nine-to-five jobs and have miserable lives as well. And for him to now come back and claim that's not what he meant, I hate to tell you, LeBron, it's pretty clear what you meant with what you said. And he's, he's become such a laughing stock. And it's, it's sad because I don't think he's a bad guy. I think, you know, LeBron James has been the focus of the media since, what, ninth grade in Ohio. And he hasn't gotten in any trouble for DUIs or, or beating his, his girlfriend or this or that. He stayed out of the uh, the public eye in terms of embarrassing himself. But over the course of the year with the decision and not coming out against Cleveland when his name was called and claiming he was in the restroom and now calling out the common folk, this is a guy who's become an absolute laughingstock. And the only way LeBron James is going to ever silence people that rightfully now look at him in a different light is to win something. But it's despicable what he did and what he said. But I, I took out of that comment that he met more, you know, at the end of the day, the haters are going to hate, but then eventually people are going to get over it, and they're going to stop caring, and you can't just keep sitting there and hating on me, because eventually it's going to end, and no one's going to want to hear it anymore. Well, but how does he end it, guys? By winning. LeBron James wins, it's going to end. You know, Alex Rodriguez was considered for a lot of people the least clutch baseball player, right? I mean, let's face it. Alex Rodriguez came up very small in the postseason since coming to the Yankees. Well, two years ago, A-Rod batted six-something in the AL championship round, played a role in knocking out the Phillies in the World Series, was, was just blighted out of the divisional round against Minnesota, and the stigma of being a, a, a guy who's not clutch in the postseason went away. He got a ring. Peyton Manning, for a long time, was considered a great regular season quarterback, that never could win the big game in, in, in the Super Bowl. When he, when he won it a few years back, they got that stigma off his back. So if LeBron James wants the haters to shut up about it, well, go out and win. 
but don't give haters more of a reason to hate you with stupid quotes and not showing up in big games, which is what he's done. So, guys, no, I'm wait, not a wait, wait, though. He not has critical. showed up in yeah. other big games, though. He carried the heat through the Bulls series. They wouldn't have been in the NBA Finals. He had, so what? He had, so what? Who, who cares? So what? He got you know, so you did great in the championship round, guys. Do you remember who won gold? Who won silver medal to Usain Bolt's gold? Do you remember who who lost the World Series in 1976? No. Do you remember who wins? So he did great in the round to get to the championship round. But when the championship round came around, guys, he didn't show up. So yeah, he carried him against Chicago. He was the best player on the court against Chicago. No one's going to doubt that. But guess what? When it came down to winning the ring against the Dallas Mavericks, he didn't show up. I don't really have too much to say. You kind of burned me with that one. But I mean, you know, listen, you, you make a valid point. You're right. And that's what I think disturbs a lot of people, guys. The fact that he was by far the best player on the court against Chicago. He trumped Dwayne Wade. He was Batman. Dwayne Wade became Robin. And he showed the world how good he is and how clutch he could be. And I think the disappointment for fans was that he could do it against Chicago, a good defensive team with good players, but he couldn't do it against Dallas. And that's when it really counted. And if he could do it against one team, why can't he do it against the other team? And I think the, the logical response is the pressure was cooked up a notch. So, I mean, you make a valid point about being able to do it against Chicago, but that's the maddening aspect of it. He could do it against them, but he couldn't do it when it really counted against the Mavericks. Yeah, that's basically it. Uh, Dan Schwartzman of 97.5, the Fanatic. Dan, hope to have you on soon. Thanks for calling in again, man. Thanks for having me on, guys. Anytime. All right. Thank you.